On March 14, 2021, the world of innovative architecture made headlines when the government of Maldives, in conjunction with European development firm Dutch Docklands, announced the ambitious and audacious Maldives Floating City project. The heavily researched concept, which is over a decade in the making, would see the world's lowest lying archipelago expanded into a floating island city. The first of its kind, this city would be built across a 200 hectare lagoon 10 minutes from the nation's booming capital, Male. Interconnected structures shaped to mimic the island's naturally formed coral reefs will pay homage to the nation's heritage while creating a sustainable and safe lifestyle for its inhabitants and future investors. Could this bold approach to rising sea levels and global temperatures pave a new path for post-climate change living? Or will it merely place a band-aid on the wound of an unprecedented humanitarian crisis? The Maldives, officially known as the Republic of Maldives, has become synonymous with white, sandy beaches, sky-blue seas, breathtaking wildlife, and luxurious boat rides. In the 53 years since its independence from British rule, this cluster of coral atolls along the north-central Indian Ocean has become a number one tourist destination, with over 130 resorts sprinkled across 200 inhabited islands. The capital island, Malé, boasts much of the nation's population, infrastructure and development, with over 63,000 people accounting for the 543,000 plus Maldivian population. Of the 203 inhabited islands, only 20 boast a population of over 1,000 people. Fishing and boat making drive the local economy, with most citizens engaging in subsistence farming of indigenous and Portuguese imported crops, while others work as staff for the many resorts. Maldivian natives enjoy a vast cultural mix whose origins can be traced back to Sri Lanka, southern India, the Middle East, and East Africa. Despite its remote and seemingly vulnerable location, the Maldives has historically avoided the violent storms and natural disasters that plague many islands in the Indian Ocean, mostly due to its large barrier reefs and low-lying land. At roughly 1.8 meters above sea level, the Maldives is the lowest-lying nation in the world. Though this title has leaned towards its protection in the past, modern global environmental and socio-economic shifts present new and disastrous realities. While global warming and climate change has become less of a dirty word and more of an alarming reality in recent times, the Maldives and other small island developing states have been at the forefront of pushing the need for climate awareness, responsibility and preservation since the 1980s. Former President of the Republic of Maldives, Mamoun Abdul Gayoum, was cited as the brainchild of Maldivian and small island initiatives towards the regression of global warming and climate change. His emboldened speech at the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting and later the United Nations General Assembly in October 1987, titled Death of a Nation, was a rousing cry for these small nations and a convicting call-out to historical polluters like the United States and China. His efforts and the solidarity from small island nations led to the formation of the Alliance of Small Island States in 1990. These 43 states, including the Seychelles, Barbados, Guinea-Bissau, and Jamaica, are most vulnerable to climate change despite only accounting for less than 1% of the world's carbon emissions collectively. In September of 2008, the Maldives submitted a Human Rights and Climate Change report to the Office of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights. The report cites sea swells and sea level rise as a major factor to the rapid erosion of smaller islands and the permanent damage of essential coral reefs and marine life. It also linked the increase in water temperature to negative changes for the island and marine ecosystems which support the large farming and fishing community. Rising sea levels also contributed to flooding and pollution of groundwater sources, which exacerbated any efforts to connect residents with clean water and proper human waste management. Perhaps the biggest threat, second to daily Maldivian life that these environmental changes present, is the threat to tourism which accounts for over 28% of the nation's GDP. With the current global environmental state, financial contribution and immediate action towards protective measures from historical emitters like China and the US are just one of the many needs. But navigating these issues and engaging in effective yet persuasive lobbying has left the alliance of small island states in a tightrope routine unlike any other. On one side of the sword, Nations like the Maldives depend greatly on tourism and foreign investments, so singing from the rooftops about the crisis might not be the shrewdest method. 
The government of Maldives has taken creative liberty when it comes to drumming up the conversation around the crisis while treading carefully along the thin line of accusation and persuasion. In 2010, former President Mohamed Nasheed created an international stir when he held an underwater cabinet meeting to highlight the serious state of the coral atolls. Since then, state-led initiatives have tripled, with the government focused on raising funds for emergency infrastructure such as seawalls and other coastal protection projects. During the latest round of UN climate talks in Madrid, many small island nations pointed out the potential humanitarian crisis and refugee disaster awaiting those who would be deemed stateless, should these islands be completely submerged. For the small nation of Maldives, battling rising water levels is the literal difference between sinking and living. With stagnating results from recent campaigns, the Maldives government unveiled steps to cement a decade-long plan, first hatched by former president and current speaker of parliament, Mohamed Nasheed, and the company Dutch Docklands. The Maldives floating city was no longer a dream, but an active, rapid, and tangible reality. While the idea of a floating city might seem akin to the latest science fiction film, it isn't anything new at least not for the Dutch firm that will be heading up the project with full backing from the Maldives government. In a joint press release, the two bodies touted the positive impacts of the project, with Nasheed stating that the Maldives floating city does not require any land reclamation, therefore has a minimal impact on the coral reefs. Nasheed also observed that giant, new reefs will be grown to act as water breakers. Our adaption to climate change mustn't destroy nature, but work with it, as the Maldives floating city proposes. Dutch Docklands, which has already built futuristic and expensive floating housing structures in Norway and the Netherlands, while having ties to the wildly ambitious World Islands projects in Dubai, is no stranger to elaborate and often lavish undertakings. The computer-generated images of the city boast a flexible grid of residences, transportation streams, schools, hospitals, and shopping centers. Bright and sleek structures make the new island city look like a venture from the UAE. For observing developed nations, this could be the answer to the world's population crisis. But for Maldivian locals, will it just be another exclusive investment hub for wealthy foreigners? The project has been tied to a billion dollar minimum budget, while each residence is said to go for around 250,000 US dollars, a figure most locals cannot afford. The CEO of Dutch Docklands cleared up these sentiments stating that the group would work with local banks to acquire adequate mortgage facilitation and work directly with the Maldives government to secure official titles and deeds for local and international buyers. The Maldives floating city is expected to start construction in 2022, with flexibility due to shifting COVID regulations taken into account. As of now, there is no official divulged payment plan regarding who will foot the bill for the massive city project but Maldivian leaders are excited to take the plunge and finally make solid advancements towards the safety of their nation. The venture will no doubt create countless jobs and opportunities for locals while taking the climate issue out of the hands of other nations and securing the immediate future of Maldivians. But the journey to environmental security and advancement is still long, and it requires a concentrated effort on the part of every nation that inhabits the only habitable planet that humanity has.